guys my name is vivek and in this video tutorial i'll try to explain you the analytical functions in oracle i have over 7 years of experience in data warehousing and data analysis and one thing which i found relatively unfortunate is that not many people use the capability of analytical functions they are not only easy to write but they are very fast and optimized as well as by the end of this tutorial you will understand how you can write a difficult and complex query in a simple fashion and an optimized fashion using analytical functions and why you should use them pretty often. So I have an employee table here which has the standard columns employee ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, hire date, the manager ID, the department ID and the salary that kind of stuff. Now what exactly is analytical function and why should we use them? If I have to explain you in a simple fashion, analytical function are similar to aggregate functions, but you can actually, you apply the aggregate function on the entire table or on the entire selected area in the where clause. Analytical function is aggregate function but it has it offers additional stuff as well and as we progress through the tutorial we will understand how we will what what exactly analytical function offers more and why they are relatively fast if you have to remember one thing for now is analytical function helps us avoid self join remember this if you have a billion row table a self join mean you'll have to join a billion row table with another billion row table that can be easily avoided using analytical function so let's just quickly go over the syntax first of all we specified the analytic function which is like the minimum salary salary is my column then we have a keyword over which is compulsory you have to have the analytic function the and the over keyword then they have three clauses which are optional the first one is partition the second one is order and the third one is windowing. We will understand what exactly each of them mean and how we can or which clause we need to implement when that kind of stuff. What I'll also do is um, when we end this tutorial, I'll give you some practice exercises so that you get your hands on uh, on analytical functions. And uh, the next time you see a problem statement where you can actually implement analytical functions instead of writing a huge and cumbersome query which is not optimized as well, you write an analytical function. And trust me, uh, if you get a hang of it, you will be two steps ahead uh, of all the rest of the employees in your team who doesn't understand analytical function. So let's go ahead and not waste any time and write our first query. We need to find the average salary of employees department wise along with other details that means we want the entire details of the employees we want their employee id the name the their phone number salary and that kind of stuff but along with that we want an additional column which is the average of salary but we don't want the salary of the entire table we want to partition the salary department wise that means for employee 100, Steven, only these three columns should be averaged. I mean, if you don't know analytical function, how you can do this? Possibly what you will do is, you will write a query where you will do a group by department ID and take the average of salary, something like this. Select department ID comma average of salary. from employees you will run this query uh -oh. you will run this query and then you will do a self join what you will do you will do a self join with the employees table again and you will join the department id with department id and you will add this new column 
Now this is all right if you have a table that has maybe 10,000 rows or 20,000 rows. But imagine you have a situation in a warehouse where you have 100 million rows. In that case, it's not efficient to actually do a self join. So what in that case, what we can do is we can use this analytical functions. The first thing is we actually need all the details. So I gave employee table and alias and I selected all the details. Along with that, what I need to do is I need the average of salary. Fair enough. Now, as I told you that uh, over is also a mandatory keyword, but I want the salary to be partitioned by department ID. So I'll simply write partition by department ID comma a star and let's see if we get the same result. I'll specify this as average department salary. So here we got the same result. We got our, let's order it by employee ID. So if you see here, we got the same result for department 90, we have the same average salary. So we, the excellent thing that we did here is we wrote an optimized query that had no join. That means we don't have to join two tables that had billion rows. We wrote a query that's fairly simple. I mean, you don't have to do complex joins. It's just single table and you're writing analytical function with that. So it looks good. It's easy to maintain and it's optimized. Pretty good, right? Now let's move to another uh, step, which is relatively complex. I came across this scenario, which I'm sure you cannot implement through, uh, without doing join and stuff, you cannot implement this unless you know analytical functions. And I'm sure after this tutorial, you, you'll know that. So I have a bunch of departments and I actually want to see the details of the joinees that have joined most recently. I mean, I have, um, say I have 10 employees per department. I want to see the, the person who joined, uh, the latest, like for this, uh, this particular department ID 90, Nina Kocher has joined in 2005. That means she is the most recent for department ID 60. Bruce Ernest has joined recently. He joined, I mean, he joined like 10 years back, but he is the last employee that was recruited by this organization. So how we can actually calculate that? Let's see. Again, if you want to do that, uh, what if you want to do with the standard conventional old stuff without analytical function, what we can do is we can group by department ID and we can find the max hire date for that particular department. Then we can do a self join, but then you are again joining uh, two tables with billion records and nobody likes that. And again, nobody likes uh, joins. It brings additional complexity, which you don't want. So what we will do is again, since we want all the uh, rows, I will choose a dot star and here I'll use a function called lead. And I'll explain what that exactly is. It's another analytic function. Lead of higher date over is mandatory. Partition by department ID. What exactly this partition by means? It means that the operation lead or whatever analytic function that we have chosen, it will be applicable only for that particular partition independently we will apply it apply it uh, this department wise so first of all this particular department on this particular department the operation will be performed then on the next department then on the next department but that particular operation will be independent of other departments so that is the main purpose of the partition so we are choosing a lead of higher date over partition by department id and if you see in the previous one 
I actually didn't include any order by or window by clause. Here I'm going to use the order by clause which is relevant to me and I'll explain you in a moment why. Now let's forget about other departments for a moment. Just focus on the department number 90. So if you see here, we know that from the data, we can actually look that uh, Nina Kocher is the one who has joined most recently. She joined in 2005 while the other two joined in 2003 and 2001. So what the lead function does is it actually allows you to access the previous row based on the order clause. Let me repeat that for you. So first of all, the data was uh, we are operating on first just one partition. As I mentioned that whatever function, whatever analytic function you specify, it will be operated on independent partitions it will be operated on partitions independently so first of all it will take care only of these three rows it doesn't care about the other rows because these three rows have department id 90. the second step which is very important here to understand order by clause so what it does is the analytical function here it's allowing you to access the previous value the act to access the value of the previous row here. So if you see here, this higher date 03 actually belongs to another row, but you can actually leverage it in a different row. So you didn't do any join, but it still allowed you to access value from a different row. So what the lead function does is it access the next value based on the higher date. Okay. So this, this guy, uh, Lex, he was hired in 2001. The guy next to him after him was hired in 2003, which is King Stephen King. He was hired in 2003. The guy next to him was hired in 2005, which is Nina. Now we don't have any employee that belongs to department number 90 who was hired after Nina. So it's recent joinee is nil. Do you know what, which particular record we should select? We need to select the record where the recent joinee is nil because after this, nobody was hired. Let's see, let's quickly go through and look at the other, other things as well. If we did it correctly or the other departments as well, Let, let's look at department ID, uh, 60. So here, uh, the first guy that was hired was two th in 2005. Then they had someone in 2006. Then they had someone in Feb 2007, in May 2007. But after May 2007, they didn't hire anyone. So, they, so we have the value as null. So what we need to do is we need to select all the records or all the employees where the recent joinee is null. So I'll write another query or I'll encapsulate this select all from this where recent joinee is null. So with this simple query without doing any self join, I actually calculated who are the most recent joinees department wise that have joined the organization. Pretty nice, right? Pretty neat. So let's see what exactly we have learned till now. Analytical functions are similar to aggregate function, but they provide much more. The functions are applied on partitions independently. And we saw that the lead function was employed or was actually employed, applied on uh, department IDs individually. 
and it lets you query from more than one row in a table without using a join condition and guys you have to understand this i have worked on projects where we had more than a billion rows it was a columnar database and in that case can you imagine doing a self join joining two tables with a billion rows it would take like 20 minutes and using this since it was a columnar database there was compression implemented the result will come in seconds it's that amazing so i highly recommend using this and you can actually see the performance for yourself it will be improved so as of now let's go back to the syntax we know the analytical functions we know minimum function we know average function we know lead function i'll give you home assignment for other functions so that you can practice them on your own we have actually worked on two clauses as of now we have worked on partition we have worked on order by clause now let's go ahead and quickly see what's the windowing clause and what do we mean by that um so what i uh, what what i did here is i found the um before we go ahead let's practice one more scenario quickly um uh, i want to have the i want to get the cumulative salary department wise so what i want to do is i want the details of all the employees along with that i want an additional column which will be my cumulative salary department wise so what i want what i'll do here is i'll write my analytical functions which is sum of salary over this is a keyword it's mandatory the braces now i want the salary to be partitioned by department wise so i'll write partition by department and i mean order by actually doesn't matter so but just for the sake of clarity i'll give an order by employee id and let's run it let's uh, copy our order by clause here because we are used to seeing the data in a particular format we are used to that department id 90 and i've made a mistake so here you see i see a cumulative salary for department this guy had salary 24000 the next one had 17000 i see here 41000 the next one has again 17000 58000 now since we move to a new department it will again being ca calculated because my aggregate function it applies to particular partitions right independently so again we have 9000 15000 19000 and so on so this is perfect right you can actually find cumulative salary if you just remove the partition by clause you can get the cumulative salary across the entire organization so, so now uh, it doesn't have a partition by clause so you will so for the last value you will actually find the amount that you are spending on salary of your employees pretty cool right i sh i'm sure that you cannot do it uh, without using a join or without if you don't use analytical function it will be relatively complex i'll be happy if you guys come back and share a query that's as easy as this and performs the same function i'll add that in the assignment uh, in the description all right let's move to the last clause which is our windowing clause now what what we need to do is uh, what we need to do is we need to get the average of salary but we don't want uh, the average of the salary of the entire department we just want the salary of the previous two employees all right so uh, what i mean is if i was hired say in 2005 i just want the salary of two guys who were hired before me who were hired like just before me but they belong to the same department so i'll write select all from employees and uh, i want the average of the salary over is again the same keyword 
I have to partition that by department ID. I have to audit that by hire date because I want to uh, see the employees that were hired near my date. And then I'll be using something called something called rows to rows preceding to and let's run it oh I actually made a mistake uh, it should be rows to preceding so let's see how it actually happened let's give it an alias it's too big Cell department near. So this is the average salary of people who actually were hired near to me. Let's order by employee ID and department ID. So let's see. Uh, here we have again the same department ID and so no uh, to this particular guy was hired first so the salary will be same because nobody was hired prior to him so the analytical function won't work for him for the guy who was hired second which is this it takes the average salary of the particular guy and the guy who was hired before him so for Lex who was hired first, the function didn't work because we are windowing it for people who were hired before him. So we got the same average salary. For the second person who was hired after Lex, which is Steven, we got the average salary of Steven and Lex. For the third guy, which is Nina Kocher, we got the average of three salaries, which is Lex, Nina and Steven. So I ho hopefully uh, it is clear to you. What I'll do is I'll give you some exercises on this and you can try implementing that. And if that's not clear, I'll make some more videos, especially on windowing functions so that you can actually understand this. I'll just show you the uh, exercise that I've prepared for you guys. What you need to do is you need to select the details of employees with minimum salary on their designation. In the video, what we did is we identified the average or the maximum salary based on department. Here you need to find the details of the employees with minimum salary on their designation. The second thing we need to do is we need to identify the oldest employees from each department. In the video, we found the newest employees from each department and we need to add an additional column. Think about it, how you can do that. And you need to give them a 10% bo bonus of their salary. So if their salary is like 20,000, their bonus should be 2000 and there should be an additional column for that. Just think about it. And in case if you're not able to solve it, I'll just reply in one of the comments, the solution. The third thing that you need to do, which is interesting, and I have not uh, shared this with you. You need to get the details of all the employees. All right. And you need to specify the count of reporting reportees that the manager has for example nina she reports to steven and, and steven has 14 reportees so you need to show the details of nina along with another column that says 14. the fourth uh, question is you need to show the details of all the employees along with that you need to have an additional column and that column should show average of salary and it should be partitioned by designation but it you have to show or you have to take the average only for those individual which were hired before 12 years. So you have to show the details of all the employees, but the average should be computed only for those people who were hired before 12 years in that particular department. In case if you find it too difficult to solve, don't worry about it. I'll help you. I'll help you out and uh, we will do it together. Don't worry about it. And if required, I'll make another video on the solution of these four queries. But hopefully, if you try it on your own, 
you will be able to get it and i'll provide you the insert statement and the table structure for this so that you can play around on your own thanks guys for watching this video please like this video and please subscribe to my channel it actually helps me and it actually motivates me to make more such videos and i'll see you with another such video in a very short while thanks a lot